Welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with Oracle S-Base. My name is Jason Novikoff, and in this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of the new features and enhancements in the various S-Base 21C versions as of February 2022. S-Base 21C was released in December of 2020 as the successor to S-Base 19C. While 19C was only deployable via the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Marketplace, the initial release of 21C was a reversal from cloud back to independent deployment on a Linux server you provide yourself. In February of 21, Oracle released an OCI marketplace deployment option parallel to the independent deployment, giving you both options. In May of 21, the 21.2 version became available for both independent and marketplace deployment. Lastly, in December of 21, version 21.3 added independent deployment to Windows servers in addition to the independent and marketplace deployment options for Linux. The initial release of SBase 21C was only available to deploy independently to your own provided Linux server, either Oracle Unbreakable Linux or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. SBase requires a relational repository, and the supported database versions are either Oracle Database 18.3, 19.3, or SQL Server 2016, Service Pack 2. The SBase and Relational Database server should be in the same data center. The web user interface supports the latest versions of all major browsers. User provisioning with external directory authentication is configurable via WebLogic or EPM shared services. The Linux operating system can be installed on a physical machine, or virtual machine, including VMs on third-party hosts like AWS or Azure. A couple of months after the 21C independent deployment method, Oracle released the updated OCI Marketplace offering with the same 21.1 version. The Marketplace offering will automatically build you a Linux server running SBase 21C once you provide the answers to all of the prompts. For the relational repository, you can choose to let the marketplace deployment auto-create an autonomous database, or you can predefine an autonomous or traditional Oracle database in OCI before running the marketplace configurator. In either case, the SBase and relational database VMs should be in the same Oracle Cloud region. For the marketplace deployment, the only supported provisioning mode is Identity Cloud Services, also known as Identity and Access Management. The flexible compute shape gives you the opportunity to adjust your OCPU type and count, as well as the amount of RAM with only a reboot needed to apply the changes. After the marketplace VM is created, Oracle doesn't provide any wizards to apply patches. You either have to manually apply patches like an independent deployment or create a new marketplace VM, migrate your cubes, then delete the old VM. All of the features from OAC and 19C, including the web-based user interface and Microsoft Excel-based cube designer, carried over to 21C. In 21.1, Oracle enhanced the calc script and report script editors to be able to execute the script from the editor instead of switching between the editor and the job console. They also added the ability to specify multiple files in a single job and use member selection during partition definition instead of needing to copy-paste or type the member names from, mem from memory. The outline editor was also improved, adding a verify function, the ability to resize columns, and display of additional member information. In the Excel-based Cube Designer interface, SBase 21C introduced a new hybrid BSO cube optimization utility. Some SBase administrators have long been creating covert shadow cubes to prevent taking cubes out of service. When SBase cubes are being updated, they aren't available to be queried by end users. SBase 21C introduced a supported way to create these shadow cubes. The first step is to create the shadow cube, which requires stopping the public cube to put it in read-only mode. Next, you run Maxell scripts to perform the dimension builds, data loads, and calc scripts against the shadow cube. Don't change security or the partitions in the shadow cube as those changes won't get pushed to the public cube. Lastly, promote or delete the shadow cube, which again requires stopping the public cube to perform the swap and or set it back to read-write mode. The shadow cube API calls have an option to wait and or kill user queries before the necessary stop of the public cube. 
The create, promote, and delete processes all have to be done via REST API. I really wish Oracle would add shadow cube commands to Maxell so we wouldn't have to create long, finicky Java programs to use them. The 21.2 version introduced an even better rule file editor with enhanced preview of the data, easy selection of members, and improved navigation while defining mappings and properties. The job user interface was also adjusted to keep it consistent with the changes to the rule file editor. Another nice update to the cube designer in Excel was the ability to edit calc scripts without needing to switch to the web interface. Federated partitions allow you to designate some or all intersections in a cube to be stored and directly referenced from a data source instead of from within the cube itself. Sbase uses the hybrid engine to dynamically aggregate these hierarchies. Federated partitions were available in Sbase 19C, but weren't included in the initial release of Sbase 21C. When they were reintroduced in 21.2, there were some limitations. Federated partitioning is only available in SBase instances that were created via OCI marketplace deployment and can only source data from Oracle Autonomous Databases. Version 21.2.1 was mostly a patch release. However, it enabled the ability to configure multiple instances of SBase in an existing EPM shared services environment. Prior to 21.2.1, SBase required a standalone EPM shared service instance if you wanted to use that authentication mode, because the SBase 21C configuration would overwrite whatever SBase instances were defined in that shared service environment. The 21.3 release added the option to independently deploy SBase to Windows Server 2019. The relational repository, browser, authentication modes, and server support remained unchanged. The Sbase Marketplace offering already supported terraforming scripts to automate building of your Sbase instance. Version 21.3 bumps up the compatibility level to HashiCorp Terraform version 1.0. Prior to version 21.3, if you needed an intermediate public server to access your backend Sbase server, which was on a private subnet, you had to provision a Bastion server that consumed additional Oracle Universal credits. Now, Oracle provides Bastion services as a no-additional-cost Oracle Cloud agent. With added support of generic JDBC drivers, you now have the ability to connect to a wider variety and version of source databases. Data sources also now support specifying S-based substitution variables for query parameters. Several enhancements were made to the drill-through interface. We can now define mapping for runtime parameters and assign level zero mapping of runtime parameters. Recursive drill through with runtime parameters means that if someone drills through, for instance, at quarter one, the report will return the level zero descendants of that member. Additionally, the logs now include the selected values of the runtime parameters. In version 21.3, Oracle made performance improvements to the hybrid BSO engine. Additionally, that changed the way members are stored in the outline. Prior to version 21.3, shared members and their related stored members had the same member ID. Now, all members have unique member IDs, so when you zoom in or out on a shared member hierarchy, the navigation will remain within that hierarchy instead of reverting to the parent of the stored prototype member.